from where we left off last time, we had set up the tab strip and the employee management content. Very simplistic, but what we want to do now is fill this in with some data from TM1. So let's take a look at the completed application to see where we're going. We're going to pull from a queue view from TM1 and display it here in a grid. In this case, we're going to not deal yet with the toolbar and the buttons, but we'll just get this grid operational. So let's start off with looking at Enterprise Services, localhost, and you'll notice that we have two cubes here that are in TM1. The employee by period is what we'll be using in the subsequent tabs, but we're going to use employees here. And what we've set up is a view here called M MGMT, so employee management. And this is simply a two-dimensional cube with employees on the rows and the measures for the employees on the columns. Let's take a look at the columns that we're going to be displaying. So it's going to be salary, employee hourly rate and so forth. So these are what's going to fill in the content to the grid. And then the rows will have the leaves of the employee. So employee dimension. So the uh, only what we'll be displaying will be the actual employees, not the breakout or the aggregates that are contained within those employees. So if we preview this data, essentially what we want to display is this information that you see here, the employee, employee name, salary, and so forth. In our application, we created app main, which instantiates the tab strip. And then for each of the tabs, it loads the content that you see here specified by this URL. We don't have to make any changes to this. This is just fine. What we need to do now is focus on the module app employee management. So let's go ahead and create the module. Okay, and this is called employee management. What we're going to be putting in this module at this point is just simply a grid. So let's define our div tag that we supplied for our widgets. And that's going to be ID. We'll give it an ID of employee grid. And again, because we want this grid to fill up the entire page, we're going to use height equals fill. And so that will fill the entire module as much as it can. When you'll notice now that I have two additional options here over what we discussed earlier, data sources and the destroy. Data sources are where you can define similar to fields a, uh, a list of all of the data sources you're going to be using within that module. And they will be queried at the time that the module is created. The destroy function is what is used if your module needs to do some specific functions when the module gets closed. For example, if you needed to uh, log out of a secondary data source that we don't have defined here. Most of the time you don't have to put anything in this destroy function, but there are certain cases where you may want to do that here, and this is where it would be done. To begin the creation of the grid, so we've defined it in the div tag, now what we need to do is actually create it itself. So we use the function again, escreate, and we specify the object we want to create, which is an escgrid, followed by the id tag, which is employee grid and then any options, so employee grid ops. And that is just a variable that we're going to define actually right here. So let's do var employee grid ops. It's just equal to a standard JavaScript object. So the grid is instantiated here with some options, and then we're going to specify what those options are. Now since what we want to do is pull data from TM1 using the view we defined, and that is called EMPMGMT.
we're going to now bring that into the grid itself. So what we need to do is specify data source and then the data source that we want to connect with is simply a method call from Enterprise Services. So that's actually method name and the method name that we created which was EMPMGMT. Let's review here the ES create instantiates the grid with these options. The data source that we're going to be using for the grid is coming from a web service call. The method name is EMPMGMT and we will put that right in the module as employee grid. So let's save this now and we can go back to our application and take a look at what we now have in our module. So you'll see now that the employee grid is simply taken up the entire height of the tab and it has pulled all the information out of TM1 into these columns. What you'll notice here is that the grid columns are all uniform. So as a default, if you do not specify what to do with the columns, ES Framework will divide the column widths equally amongst all of the data that you have. What we're going to do is we're going to now split those out and format them or at least expand them out to uh, different widths so that it looks a little bit nicer. Let's take a look at our source again and we're going to add, to do this, we're going to add some additional options to the employee grid. So we do that through a new option called columns. And this is an array of specifications for how those columns are to be created. So let's start off with the first column and there are a number of options you can specify. We're going to use just several of them. So we're going to use the field and we need to bind this to the name of the field that's coming from our web service method. So this is employee. That's the first field we want to have in our uh, grid and the title is going to be employee ID. So we can rename the titles that are coming from the data source, give it our own here as you see here, and then the width, we want to expand that out to um, 100 pixels. So this is now going to make it a little bit wider for the employee name. And we're going to do the same for all of the other fields. So I just happen to have that available here. I'm going to paste that in. And so you're going to see that we have employee name, department, employee title, start date, the end date, type, salary, hours per week, hourly rate, and bill of rates, and total benefits. I've got the title in here, which says uh, what we want to call it. So we don't necessarily want it to be returned as employee start date. We want to call it start date. The width, and then you'll also notice a type designator on here that we can specify whether it's a date or in this case uh, a number or a currency. So if you give the type as a currency you'll get a, a numeric comma separated value back with dollar signs in front and a number is simply with uh, commas. Alright, now we can take a look at what that grid looks like now that we've defined the columns here. Let's get this out and refresh our display. And now you'll see the columns are all properly spaced with the new titles that we gave them. And again you can see here that the format is date, um, dollars, and then numeric and so forth. Returning back to our source code, the next thing now we're going to do from our sample application, the completed one, is to add the pageable options so that the data source can 
pull only what is really required. Now to do this we have to add a couple of options. So the first thing we're going to do is add pageable to the grid itself, but also the data source needs to know that the paging is turned on as well. So we're going to turn on server paging and we're going to set that to true and we need to set the page size that we want to use for this. So now when I save it, look at the difference that occurs in this grid. You'll notice that the grid has just all of the employees listed here. There's no controls that we saw in our completed app. If we hit F5 now, you can see that we get page numbers. There are 10 employees that show up in here, and we can page through them using the little buttons and the little navigators. We're almost done. We have a little bit more that we want to change in our application. We've defined this data source here in the grid options themselves but we can actually do that and it is better to do that in the data sources here and the reason why is because enterprise services framework understands all of the data sources you've defined here and will query them in parallel uh, to improve performance so whenever possible it is best to use the data sources to create this what we're going to do is we're going to take this data source and we're just going to move it up here into this data sources and we're going to give this name and list. Now when the module is created anything that is in here will be queried at that time. So in our case it's going to be the emp list, it's going to call emp management method, turn on server paging and the page size is true. Okay. Now we need to replace this data source with what we created up here and that is simply done by specifying that data source and that is done by this data sources. So this references the module itself and then data sources emp list. So now what we've done is we've tied this defined data source emp list to the grid itself by using its JavaScript notation. Now if I save this and return back to the application and refresh and it loads it automatically in a parallel or asynchronous fashion with the rest of the application and I have my paging that we've defined earlier. This concludes Part 3 of the Enterprise Services Tutorial.